I spent over 200 hours making this huge anime cheerleader portrait entirely out of pom-poms. Why? Because of this guy. This is Porter Robinson. He's a DJ, producer, musician, and he recently dropped his new album, Smile. And on that album is one of my new all-time favorite songs, Cheerleader. It's not Saying that I levitate out of my seat anytime that I hear it would be a gross understatement. Anyways, one of the main characters from the music video is this anime type cheerleader. So I thought this could be a great reference for a painting. But since I'm a glutton for punishment, I took it a couple steps further. So instead of just painting a regular portrait on a piece of canvas, what if it was made entirely out of pom-pom pieces? You know, those little strips of plastic that make up those fluffy balls that are used by actual cheerleaders. I mean, how hard could it really be? For projects of this size, the most important part is mapping out your moves. So I grabbed a screenshot from the music video to use as my reference. Then I brought it into Photoshop to edit the composition a bit and then convert it to pixel art. Each one of these pixels would represent three individual pom-pom pieces. But here's where I ran into my first real test of patience. See, this picture reference is 100 by 167 pixels. Since each pixel represents three pom-pom pieces, we're looking at over 50,000 chances to mess up. I needed to be absolutely sure that each piece was going exactly where it needed to be. My solution, a good old fashioned spreadsheet. I labeled each color with the number one through 20. Then I sat down and went line by line, manually inputting each number into its corresponding spot in the spreadsheet. Did this take many hours to complete? Yes. But am I a little bit better at moving around a spreadsheet now? Also yes. Once I finally completed this, I can move on to the next steps, which thankfully weren't taking place on a screen. I ran to the store to grab my canvas building supplies, a big sheet of birch wood, select pine, and a box of screws. I got back to the wood shop, started to put it together. But then of course we encountered another painfully tedious part of this process, drawing out and labeling the grid lines. See, I needed to make sure that my grid lines from the reference actually matched up in the physical canvas too. So I penciled in the 100 by 167 grid. Then again, I went line by line to write where each of the colors, or you know, in this case numbers, was supposed to be. But after a couple days of sweating in the great Florida heat and writing thousands of numbers, we finished. And in perfect time too, because the pom-poms that I ordered just got delivered. You just got delivered. I ordered a bunch of pom-poms from Amazon. So I started off with a pack of 120. I have my whole map ready, as you can see. It's pretty sick. And I know exactly how much of each color I'm gonna need for this whole thing. So I'm gonna unwrap these. I'm gonna start cutting stuff up and I'll get back to it. To my surprise, a pom-pom is actually just a couple big sheets of colored mylar cut a bunch of times and zip tied to a plastic handle. I don't know why I didn't know that before, but, but when you take it apart, it looks something like this. So instead of having to cut thousands of pieces by hand, I figured I was getting a break in the storm clouds and something was finally going to go my way. Wrong. I learned very quickly that paint does not take well to mylar, like at all. The first one is we're going to dip it in some gesso. It's basically like a primer. You use it when you're making paintings to put it on the base of like a canvas or a board. You can see it hasn't been used very often. We're gonna test it out. Got my gloves. It has a pretty thick consistency, so I don't know. I don't really know if this is gonna work. Uh, it, it might make things a little too heavy, but we're gonna give it a shot. I'm also really worried about them bunching up once I actually do dip them. Let's just, oh, this is already a mess. Yeah, this was going to go a lot better in my head. So to be fair, just might not need that much per each piece. So I'm not interested in doing this 40,000 times. All right, we're going to let that dry, see if it actually works. It looks pretty clearly like it's not going to, but we'll figure out a solution when we come to it. Absolutely no luck. Spray paint didn't work, regular paint didn't work. It was too slick of a surface and it even discolored the paint that I put on it. I was so desperate that I actually tried washing it in a sink to see if I could get the slimy like stickiness off. I'm not gonna lie, I was extremely discouraged and frustrated. Using these pom-poms was the entire premise of this painting. So I, I had to stick with it. But what could I possibly use as a, wait, stick with it stick tape sticks to stuff oh my god i'm gonna use tape instead 
My new plan was to make fake pieces of pom-pom using strips of painter's tape. The idea was to take a strip of tape that was double the width of the canvas and then fold it over onto itself so it was a little bit thicker. Then I could paint each of the sections on each strip independently and then put it back on the canvas when it was ready. Then all I'd have to do was just cut up all the strips and boom, we're good to go. And it looks just like pom-poms. Or close enough. Went back to the store to get my painter's tape. And while I was there, I actually went and grabbed the 20 different colors that I needed as well. Fun fact, you can actually buy little sample sizes of each of these colors for like $5 a pop. So save me a ton of money instead of having to buy the gallon size paints. Anyways, I get back to the workshop and I start making the strips. I mark the edges of each one of them and then labeled them one through 167, just so I know the correct order for when I have to put them on later. After I was done making them all, I brought them back onto the canvas so that I can mark on the tape where I needed to paint each section, marking things again. I have to make sure that my sections are correct, otherwise this is gonna be a complete shit show. After that was done, I just did a couple test strips to make sure the paint stuck and got busy. Now, I only had space to paint these out about 10 to 15 strips at a time. So I had to paint one section first, wait for it to dry, remove it, add the next one. That was the process that I went with. It's about one in the morning. It's hot as hell in this garage. I'm sweaty, my face is red, but we're making progress. I can tell maybe a little bit, my voice is a little off because I've been sick the past few days, uh, which has been about as fun as it sounds, but we press on. So it did take several days to actually get through them all, but after many late nights sweating in the garage, I was ready to move on to the second to last part. The strips are all painted, ready to go, paint's dry. I just gotta put it on the canvas. I started at the bottom row and worked my way up. I basically just secured it with some clear scotch tape. I think I was initially gonna use something like Mod Podge or like glue to put it down, but at this point it was overkill. I might as well just tape it down. Surprisingly, I still needed a couple breaks because this just was such a tedious and fatiguing process. But after, I don't know, a few hours maybe, uh, I did end up finishing. We're moving on to the last part, which is cutting all the strips up. To be honest, I had kind of been putting off coming up with a plan for this part because I knew it was going to be such a pain in the ass. My original thought was to just put my headphones in, grab a box cutter and get busy. But I started doing that for like 10 minutes and very quickly realized this would take so long if I kept going down that path. So I had another idea. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but anything was better than this tedious way of doing it. This is taking forever. I'm sweaty. It's hot. There are mosquitoes out here. But I have an idea, and I think it might work if I can build it correctly. So, give me a minute. I was gonna make a modified pizza cutter, you know, with 30 blades on it or some crazy number like that. See, because I taped down each of the strips instead of using like a glue or something else, I could very easily cut through several rows of them at a time. And I could do that with a rotary blade, just like the one you use to cut pizza. The only problem is pizza cutters are weirdly expensive to buy and they don't really sell replacement blades in a whole lot of places. But I actually ended up stumbling across a bunch of rotary replacement blades at like a craft store instead of a hardware store. So I bought up, I don't know, 25, 30 of them. Uh, I ended up getting a carriage bolt to hold them all and then some washers to separate and nuts to tie them off so that it would be, you know, stuck on the ends. And with this, I was thinking I could use this to roll each section, make all of my cuts much quicker and be done with this in maybe a couple of hours. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, wait, Noah, that looks kind of dangerous. You're right, it absolutely was. Less than 10 minutes after I finished building this cutting machine, this happened. So after that, I took off a good amount of the blades to give my hands a little bit more space to work with. And that honestly seemed to do the trick. It still took a bit of time. It was annoying. I did get a lot of hand cramps, but eventually I finished it up. Now I just got to fluff up all these pieces, make them look, you know, kind of more dimensional than they do right now. And we're ready to get this thing ready for presentation. Finally, after a grueling, tedious process, the end was in sight. All that's left is to frame it in with some select pine and sand the edges to make it cleaner. This step really only took a couple of hours. Once that was said and done, it was time to do the honors of hanging the finished piece for the big reveal. It's not Hundreds of hours later, our portrait is finished. Through literal blood, sweat, and tears of frustration, we did it. Thousands of cuts, 167 individual tape strips, 20 different colors, and one finished painting. If I learned anything throughout this process, it's that my patience sucks a lot. 
but as long as you stick with it, eventually you'll get there. So thank you for watching. And if for some reason, Porter, you're watching this and you want this painting, just say the word and I'll send it over. Thanks for making great music. I'll see y'all later.